Hi, I'm Alex. Welcome to the channel and thanks for tuning in. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about a new SPAC that I'm talking about on this channel, and that is Star Peak Energy Transition Corp and its recent merger announcement with STEM. Now, if you've seen any other videos I've done on this channel, you know that this is not something I say often, if ever at all, but I really think this could be one of the most exciting SPACs this year, and it's definitely one that you want to seriously consider holding in your portfolio for next year. And in this video, we're going to talk about all the reasons why that is the case. So look, it's not the coolest SPAC, it's not the sexiest sector, and talking about this at bars is not going to win anyone over. Going off script slightly here, if that is the kind of conversation you're using at bars, then I suggest trying to change topics up a bit, you might have a bit more luck. But look, there's so much to be excited about with this SPAC. It's not the simplest market to get your head around. However, stick with me, and I agree, but by the end of this, you'll have a better understanding of it, why it's exciting, and it won't have been a waste of your time. If you're new to the channel and you like investor-related content, then smash that subscribe button. While you're at it, please smash a like button. It's so helpful in pushing the channel to a wider audience. And as always, I'm not a financial advisor. This video is purely for educational and entertainment purposes only, but let's get straight into it. So Starpeak is another SPAC raised focusing on making investments into the energy transition space. Now we'll come on to this in a second, but ultimately they announced their plans to merge with STEM. Now I'll try to simplify this as much as possible, but what STEM ultimately does is focused on energy management, energy optimization, and energy storage. And all of that is powered by their AI software, Athena. Now this part of the market is such an important market, especially as we see this transition to carbon neutral energy. Energy storage and energy optimization is an area of the market that's going to experience massive growth and is really underappreciated by many investors at this point in time. Now in my full-time investing job, I did actually spend around a year looking at this sector, the distributed energy space, the energy storage and optimization space, with the view of making an investment into it. And ultimately we didn't make one. However, I spent a lot of time understanding the market and understanding the dynamics. I'm gonna try and share some of that understanding with you in this video. I'm not gonna spend too much time looking at things from the investor presentation. I'll touch on some, but I plan, if there's interest in it, to do another video where I look in detail at the investor presentation and share some of the key highlights and things that I see from that that you should be aware of. So first off, let's talk about the merits of this investment and the merits of the market. So this small niche part of the energy market that STEM currently focuses on, the energy storage, energy optimization, and energy management, is an area that's gonna experience massive growth. Now I'm gonna talk about some of the key reasons why we're gonna see that growth and kind of bring it all together at the end. So stick with me on these and you'll understand why STEM is so important. Renewable energy is intermittent. Now what that ultimately means is it doesn't generate electricity consistently in the same way that say burning a fossil fuel would. For example, it's not sunny 24 seven. It's not windy 24 seven in the same way that gas can be ignited and 24 seven generate the same level of electricity. What's more is this production cycle doesn't match a demand cycle, i.e. when it's sunny, people don't need the same amount of electricity as they do when it's dark when they're powering their homes. Secondly, when you look at the cost of actually generating renewable energy, it's very high. And the reason for that is because of this intermittency, typically when you build a renewable energy plant, you have to build a traditional power plant powered by fossil fuels or another method that provides the same capacity of electricity generation to make sure that in peak demand periods, you're able to provide that level of electricity. So yes, whilst units of energy generated from say the sun or from wind are free, you still have the build cost of the renewable plant and then having to have the backup fossil fueled or other power plant to provide that capacity consistently. And ultimately that's why the price of renewable energy at this point in time is high. Thirdly, it's the fact that the grid infrastructure is actually quite poor. Now there's an increasing occurrence of grayouts and blackouts. And for companies and businesses which require energy as a mission critical source, that's a risk and that's a real issue. Demand for electricity just continues to increase and the investment into the grid infrastructure hasn't kept up with that. Ultimately, all companies have a mission critical need for electricity. Think of it in any way. Think of data centers, hospitals, supermarkets. All of those need electricity. So if they can decrease their reliance on the grid for that, then that's a good thing. The next point is actually that the technology in batteries has increased massively recently. In the not too distant past, batteries were not that good at storing large amounts of energy. And so this improvement in battery technology has really driven and created the need for this sector even more. One thing to know with batteries is that the electricity you put in isn't necessarily the electricity you get out. So batteries do have that inherent inefficiency. However, that has improved massively recently. And as we continue developing batteries in new ways, it's just like to get better and better. Next up, we need to think about the demand for electricity. So yes, whilst it's predictable, it does have peaks and troughs. And as part of that, it has a price cycle. So when the electricity is in greater demand, the price is greater. And when it's in lower demand, the price is less. And this point around the difference in pricing of electricity at different points in the day is really important here. And we'll touch on why in more detail shortly. The next point to remember is that governments have committed two net carbon neutral targets for electricity generation. Being able to generate electricity from renewable sources is a big part of being able to achieve those targets. So what we can expect is massive government focus on this sector and massive subsidies and support to make sure they can hit those targets. So ultimately STEM and its AI software Athena are so well positioned in this market to address the challenges currently faced by the sector and support this transition into a renewable energy, a green energy environment. 
Its propositions and solutions will help beat that intermittence issue around renewable energy, which in turn will help reduce the cost of renewable energy by no longer needing to build those other power stations alongside renewable power plants. It helps its customers reduce their reliance on the grid, and ultimately it's completely aligned to all of the government macro targets on this. So ultimately, just from these dynamics alone, I'm really excited about this opportunity. I think STEM is really well positioned to capitalise on this opportunity. Now that's not the only exciting thing, the next part is the resilience. Now if you've seen any of my other videos on this channel, you know how important to me resilience in the businesses I invest into is. And here STEM has a really exciting resilient business model. Firstly, the demand. It's completely mission critical for its customers. There's no discretionary element to spending on electricity. And ultimately you don't just voluntarily go without electricity. This is reflected in the longevity of its customers and in the contract base of its customers as well. Typically its customers are on 10 to 20 year contracts. Additionally, its customers have made a large capital investment into some infrastructure, and for them to continue using it and get benefit from it, they have to enter into the contract with STEM. So this gives great certainty over revenues and great visibility. It also has a really, really strong customer proposition. Now its customers can be segmented into two different buckets, those called behind the meter, and these are commercial and industrial customers. For them, the proposition is quite clear. It's aligned to their ESG principles, they can make great savings on their energy costs, and that is in the magnitude of 10 to 30% of their energy costs can be saved by using STEM's products and ultimately it reduces the reliance on the grid. So it's worth touching here on how STEM saves its customers money. Well, as we mentioned before, the difference in electricity prices throughout the day. Ultimately, the savings here for the customer are made by charging up the batteries at the point in the day when electricity prices are the lowest, when demand generally is the lowest. And then, rather than the customer having to buy electricity from the grid when the prices are higher, they then use the electricity stored in batteries. And the other part of the customer base is the front of meter, those who own the infrastructure. And the proposition for them is just greater returns on their investment and also greater diversity of revenue streams, more revenues which they can generate from other methods. So overall, there's a very clear value proposition here for all parties. The next point is the benefit of scale and how, in a way, this also acts as a barrier to entry. Now, this is also where it gets really, really exciting as well. So ultimately, the more data points, the more customers that STEM has, the more data there is and the more learning which the AI platform Athena can do. That in turn improves the software and it makes it a self-fulfilling cycle. Now with this scale as well comes the opportunity to build virtual power plants. Now say you have 10 customers, all of those customers have fully charged batteries but have no need to use electricity on those batteries. They were charged at the lowest point in the day and in the local area there's a surge in demand for whatever reason and STEM can generate significant revenue by selling the collective power on those batteries onto the grid. This, generate, this can generate significant revenue and that's split between STEM and the customer. Ultimately the larger these virtual power plants are, the greater the revenues that STEM can generate from doing this. So this is really exciting. What's more, as a company gains more scale, ultimately those revenues generated from the software side become a larger proportion of the base. And that in itself drives the expectation that the company should be valued more like a tech company or more like a software company on its multiple basis. That, for investors, is very good. So now I'm going to look at the risks and the concerns I have and some of the mitigants. Now this is not exhaustive by any stretch of imagination and I will go into more depth in all of these and more in my next video do. However, for the time being, the key ones I see are firstly the financial profile. Now, I have confidence they are going to deliver the growth in the coming year, given the size of their pipeline and their booking conversion they've had historically. However, the future growth does concern me a little bit. I will in my next video try and do some analysis where I unpick from the forecast what that implies in terms of new customer wins and how that compares to historically they've done. However, there is some concern I have on there on how achievable those next few years of revenue growth are. Now, the next risk is the fact that this is obviously for its customers a significant investment. And my concern here is actually it may be more challenging, especially in the challenging economic environment, to find customers who are willing to make that initial investment. Ultimately, it's not an essential upgrade and it depends on the customer and the sector they operate in as to the potential ROI of the project. Now, the next thing we need to discuss and is a potential risk for the company is the fact that it's understood to have been through a sales process with an investment bank recently. So I'm still doing some digging on trying to understand more about this, but it's understood that they hired an investment bank to try and find a new buyer for the company. Ultimately, the M&A process clearly wasn't successful, otherwise they wouldn't be in this situation with a SPAC. However, I'm personally at this point in time not too concerned by that. STEM does have a slightly quirky business model. The fact it has some capital intensiveness around these large priced products that they're selling to customers, but it also has these recurring revenues, the software side of the business. What that ultimately means is there's no clear pool of financial buyers that may be buying those. Funds either like pure play software plays, or the funds that do like capital intensive plays aren't going to pay the premium price that one needs to for a business which has a significant software presence. Ultimately, these slight quirks and nuances of STEM's model, which are not negative by any stretch of the imagination, just make it hard to fit into the court of any one particular fund. So that's why I'm not overly concerned by this, but it's something I'm continuing to do more research on, and as I find out more, I'll share it with you. But look, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please smash the like button. If you're new to the channel and you like videos like this, then smash that subscribe button. 
And as always, please let me know your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. I find it so interesting hearing everyone's thoughts and opinions, and there's always some really interesting discussions going on in the comments. So please get involved. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in another video.